Hey everyone and welcome to another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. Uh, this week I thought we'd finally put a building on our tabletop and we're going to build that bit hanger you would have seen at the start of the video. Uh, now this is it here. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a great looking little building. Uh, there's no base on here so we should be able to put this in and fit it in with any other terrain that we've already got. Uh, this fits pretty perfectly with everything we've built so far so I'm really happy with this. Uh, now you will see throughout the video that the tools and materials for this are exactly the same tools and materials that we've been using over the last couple of months. Uh, if you check out my video from last week, you'll see um, that is some pretty basic stuff that we're working with. Uh, but this, this building uh, turned out great for what we've got. Um, and I'll show you in the video just how easy it is to make this. Uh, so I hope you uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy this. Uh, let's get started on it. Thanks, guys. All right, so to make the arch of our roof for this week's project, I'm just using a plastic plate here. Um, you should be able to use any uh, round object you like. Uh, something you can put a mark on is gonna be a lot easier to use, so I just found a plate here is perfect. Uh, obviously, we're gonna use our corrugated card as well, uh, and we're just gonna need a marker here, as I said, to mark that plate. Now, I am probably gonna be doing this uh, the hard way, uh, in that I want the corrugated um, paper to run uh, across this arch um, so it's going to bend against itself it's not too much of a problem though uh, as you'll see in the video we'll, we'll get it to stick down without too much trouble now the first thing I did there was just make a mark on the plate um, this is just our starting point for when we go to make this curve uh, again if you don't want the corrugated to run the same way I do you'll probably find a, there's a much easier way to do this um, this may not be the best way either but this is just the way I found that worked for me at the time with what I had sitting around um, so all I'm doing is starting off uh, at, at one side where I made that first mark and I'm just going to bend the paper around the plate. Um, just hold my finger where it finishes and just make a mark. This doesn't have to be perfect at all but um, you probably want it to be shorter than, than longer so um, keep in mind that this will make the arch for the top. So the next part of the project is I'm just going to be using some cardboard. Uh, this is just cardboard box obviously. Um, corrugated so um, we're actually going to use the lines in this corrugated to um, keep everything square so it doesn't really matter if it's uh, you know crookedly cut scraps that you're using as long as the surface area is big enough to cover the uh, front and rear panels for our hanger um, now as I said we're going to use the lines in the corrugated card here to uh, make this square because the cuts on this cardboard uh, are not straight at all so um, just find uh, one channel in the corrugated cardboard there put a couple of marks and then just uh, draw your uh, roof arch on there and I'm just going to draw a quick line across here uh, this is just the one where I'll mark out my front door so I'll put a line down there for this one um, now you want to measure the height as well for your walls uh, now for mine I've used uh, four centimeters from uh, the end of the arch for the roof um, obviously just work out what you want to use this building for you can change these dimensions very easily uh, now if you are worried about the square edges here I've just pretty much eyeballed it but you can just use the um, lines on your cutting mat if you've got them there uh, to help keep these sides uh, pretty square uh, again if the edges of your cardboard are not straight um, just move the uh, template a bit further in so that you can cut both sides off um, nice and neat um, so here all I'm doing obviously is just cutting out our, um, our main front uh, or rear of the building uh, craft knife there is perfect mine's not very sharp but um, to cut the curve I found a big pair of scissors was the best way to go um, again for this all we're going to do is just uh, we're going to do this for the first one all this marking out and then we're just going to use this first one as a template for um, the rear of the building uh, if you're wanting to make more of these down the track maybe just keep one of these make three of these um, so you've got two for your building and one to save for later on so I've marked that out and cut the second one out of that now uh, we can start marking at our uh, door uh, now for this you want to find the center point of your uh, of the width uh, of your uh, front wall here um, so once you work out how where the center point is just put a mark there and then mark out the width of your doorway uh, now you will need to keep in mind the height that you want your doorway to be as well because of that arch in the roof uh, it can have some limitations there for how high you want this to be so uh, obviously the narrower the door the, the slightly higher it can be um, but for mine I think six centimeters here fit perfectly and it's 11 centimeters wide uh, so I found this was just big enough to fit a Space Marine Dreadnought in um, 
that was after the fact. <laughs> I just kind of guessed at these dimensions, but uh, this worked out well. Uh, just get your craft knife now and you can just simply cut that door out. Nothing too tricky about that. It should just pop straight out. Uh, once you've got that done, uh, we're ready now to start uh, with our sides. Now, the length of this building can be whatever you want. Um, I've chosen about 16 centimeters here. This just allows me to put my braces on uh, the top, which I'll, you'll see later. Um, now I have cut these sides to be slightly higher as you can see uh, than the straight edges of those front and rear uh, walls. Um, the reason for that is I want to curve them in so I've got a glue, I've got a point to glue the roof on as we get around there. So you will see that uh, later on in the video. Uh, now here I'm just using these thin paddle pop sticks. I'm um, just making sure that it's going to fit, uh, that I haven't made anything too long um, as far as the length of this building. Um, now to curve these over, all I did was, as you can see there, just press them in and then you can just fold it down with your finger. You just want that top channel of corrugated cardboard to bend over here just so that it fits uh, nicely there. And as I said, when we bend our car corrugated card over here, uh, we're going to have a, glue, uh, a, a point to glue everything on. Um, so for this, I just use my hot glue gun um, to put this all together, this um, base structure. Uh, if you've got the lines on your cutting mat like I do, uh, it's probably a good idea to use those to keep everything square as the glue dries. This is quite important because once it sets, you're kind of working against those forces uh, you know, when you try to get everything square later on down the track. So definitely pays off to try and keep this square as you're putting this glue on and as the glue sets. It's hot glue, so it only takes a minute to dry. So it's not too hard to just uh, put it in and set it in place and then quickly line it up uh, with all the lines on your mat, as you can see there. Uh, now you just go through and finish that up, put the end on, and you're left with this. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick test fit here. Uh, like I said, just make sure that I haven't made any big mistakes and that my corrugated card is still going to fit on there. Now this is pretty sturdy as it is, but I'm going to um, put a couple of extra braces across the top here, three to be exact. Uh, this will also give me um, another point to glue on as I put uh, the corrugated card across. Uh, so you can see there I've just measured it off uh, the building itself and cut that uh, little paddle pop stick to fit. Um, to put this together I found um, PVA glue is a little bit stronger and better than trying to put hot glue on here. Um, the hot glue I did try it for the first one it just it just didn't grab so um, I felt the best idea here was to use some PVA glue and just suck it up and wait for that to dry. You will need to give it a good, um, a good amount of time for this PVA to dry um, strong enough for these braces uh, but it's definitely worth doing that uh, rather than trying to wrestle with the hot glue at this point. Um, now we're just going to measure up the uh, roof uh, so that the length of the roof fits on. This is nice and easy with this corrugated card. Uh, with the channel you just run your pen and your craft knife straight through it and it's perfect. Uh, so at this point you just want to make sure that uh, again these cuts are all pretty good and you are going to get good coverage across that roof section. It doesn't matter if you've got a bit of extra overhang here or there you can trim that out as you go. Now hot glue down the side here um, this is just our first uh, contact. Make sure you don't have this too low uh, when you set this glue in because when you reach around to the other side and you want to have the same amount roughly um, of corrugated cardboard contacting uh, the side wall. So keep that in mind as you go around. Um, this is pretty simple. We're just going to glue it in sections here. Again, this just makes sure that uh, we don't end up with it crooked on the other side when we get there. Um, you will want to um, try and clean as you go with some of this glue so it doesn't get out of hand on you. Um, as I said, we're just going to go in sections here and get this done. When you're putting this on, you do want to make sure that those braces, if you're putting glue on those wooden braces in there, you want to make sure that you press down on those um, so that you don't have big gaps. Uh, that's what will cause uh, bubbles in your roof. And Not that it's going to matter too much at the end. This doesn't need to be perfect, but uh, I liked the look of what we got here in the end with all of this stuff. So it was well worth uh, all this effort. Um, such as it is, it's really not that hard to build something like this. Uh, so just whip around then, uh, clean your glue off. As you can see, that sets really quickly and we're ready to get started on making the sides. Uh, so again, just make sure the length is right. Uh, you want to cut these a little bit longer than, the, you, than you want to cut them shorter. Uh, pretty much everything we do can be covered up in the end, honestly, if we do make any mistakes. But uh, if you're looking for a little bit of uh, extra assurance that you're not going to stuff up and waste materials, uh, it's best just to cut a little bit, uh, little bit wider than you need. That just uh, allows you that um, 
because both sides may not be the same, things may not be square, so having a little bit extra overhang is easy to cut off at the end. Uh, now for these side walls, actually I want the corrugated to run sideways, but I don't want it to look like corrugated, so uh, I just found with a rolling pin and a little bit of pressure, push that over and voila, I've got some weatherboard. And this side panelling, this weatherboard uh, panelling on the side looks really good. Uh, I will definitely be using that in future projects as well. Uh, now to glue this on, it's really simple. Just put a good smear of uh, PVA glue on there. Uh, make sure you uh, push it around and, and it has got full coverage uh, on that entire side panel when you put this on. We don't want it peeling off down the track. So make sure you get good contact for your glue and your paper. Uh, now the next thing we're going to do is just quickly mark out these end sections. I just found running around with a pen was the quickest way to go to get the mark on there and then just a pair of scissors and a craft knife and cut that out. Again it doesn't matter if it's a little bit sloppy uh, you will be able to trim it up and there will be some uh, flashing we'll put around the edges of the building to cover up some of our uh, messy work if we do have any. So um, just go through and cut off um, cut both sides. Don't worry about cutting out the door at this stage. We'll come back and cut that out later. Uh, now for the front and back it's exactly the same as the side panels we put on. Just make sure you've got very good coverage with the PVA glue and a piece of paper on there. Now you will need to make sure you leave this a bit extra to dry so uh, we are using this PVA glue so as you put these pieces on uh, and get them in the right place you will have a bit of time to move everything around uh, but you also need to um, leave it set and dry before you move on. So once that's uh, given a bit of time, I would say probably half an hour to an hour is fine for this um, to just set enough for you to um, play around with it at this point. Now cutting out our door is very simple as you can see here. All I'm doing is just working from the inside, uh, just cutting down the sides. Now cutting the top section can be a little bit trickier but uh, if I just play around and you'll, you'll find the best way to do this. Got it, got, ended up getting to it from the inside. My craft knife is not the sharpest here, so if you have rough edges, don't worry too much. It's all going to look fine in the end. Uh, so once that's on, the last thing you might want to do is just trim up the bottom to make sure that those uh, any of those overhangs that we have in our corrugated uh, paper have uh, been removed. Uh, now the next thing we're going to do is just get some cereal box cardboard and we're just going to make some flashing for the building. Uh, this will help uh, make it look a little bit better and also cover up some of our uh, mistakes and some of that gluing that we've got there. Um, some of these gaps that we might have um, for our side panels, they'll be covered up as well. Uh, so I'm just measuring off the uh, object itself. Make sure you measure each side individually. Uh, again, these things might not be perfect, so um, it's best to you know lay everything down against where you want to put it uh, and measure that um, as you go through your cuts. Uh, for this part of the process I'm just using hot glue. I found this was perfect. It didn't seem to give me any issues at all. I think having the extra uh, flat contact is, is the key there. Um, trying to glue it onto the ends of the corrugated cardboard that I used on the inside uh, just did not work when I was putting those braces on. But I found across the top and the sides here uh, hot glue was fine. Now when I come to glue the bits across the top of the building here, I uh, actually work uh, in sections with the hot glue. This just saves it drying and re you know, reducing that um, adhesiveness uh, as it does. So um, I generally just try to do a little bit at a time. Uh, or Once I know I've got it lined up and it's all going to be straight right across the top, uh, you can then hit it with a slightly larger bead of glue. Just as I said, make sure you're working with this stuff pretty quick. Uh, or you leave it the less effective it's going to be for you. Um, so just get both sides of that done and as you can see that's covered up some of our mistakes and it's looking pretty good already. Uh, next thing I'm doing here is just cutting out a little window. Now for this all I did was uh, I just used enough pressure on my craft knife to um, cut through the top layer of the corrugated cardboard and as you'll see here it will actually just easily peel back with your craft knife then. Uh, you can just pop that off and we will do that for uh, the window and we'll also carve a little door on here. Um, you could probably go around the sides uh, wherever you feel like you want to put a window. This corrugated um, paper will um, will peel away that top layer really nice and easily and leave you with those sections you want for your doors. Uh, you could fill those with um, some cereal box cardboard but I didn't find I needed to. They painted up okay. 
Speaking of painting, I uh, don't generally do this, but uh, I will give you a quick rundown of how I painted this. I basically just hit it with some uh, varying shades of grey from uh, dark to light. Now it is looking really light at this point. Um, my painting is not great, uh, but uh, I thought I should show you the process I went through here. So I'm just using some uh, Vallejo Red Brown here um, primer just to add some extra colour. So again, when I put the greys on, I wasn't too careful to be uniform spraying on that. You can be a little bit messy, leave some dark and light patches as you're painting. Same as I'm doing here with this uh, red-brown. Uh, just adding in some extra colours uh, where the rust might be. Um, good idea if you've got some reference pictures to maybe try and work off those. Get a sense of uh, you know where the rust sits on a building. Uh, this particular building, it's not hard to find those pictures. Um, you know. I mean, this is de this is by no means even close to a great paint job, but um, you know, it is really simple to just get it table ready and, and get it out there and uh, good to go. So uh, I will probably put a fair bit more effort into painting this one um, beyond what you see even at the end of the video. Um, I, I really like it, but yeah, I feel like I could do a bit more with the painting and weathering. Um, I think maybe something a little bit like I did with the shipping containers early on. Uh, that's probably going to fit with it pretty well. Uh, once I put a little bit of red brown on there, uh, I think I just went back in then with some uh, Vallejo brown. Um, it was charred brown, I believe, and uh, just went over some of that red uh, just to t pair it back a bit. It still looks pretty good. Um, it's not too bad. Like I said, I'll put a bit more effort into painting this. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it's coming up pretty good. I just cut out a small template here just to try and, you know, get the effect of there being those uh, corrugated sheets on the building. Uh, now this looks pretty harsh at the moment but I do go back as you can see here and try and blend these in a little bit so that they don't stand out quite so much and they look a little bit more natural. Um, this was pretty good, it's a really simple thing, just a piece of paper and you know cut a, cut a, cut a, little, um, cut a little doorway out of it if you like and then just lean it up with your airbrush and it uh, will give you that effect. Uh, I do blend this all together a little bit more later on with some washes but um, I won't go through that in the filming, you guys know how to put a wash on something. Um, but for the washes I just used uh, just cheap craft paint uh, with a bit of water and it seemed to work okay for me. Well certainly for, the, for what I'm trying to achieve with these, um, with these buildings. I am trying to work on my painting so I will uh, hopefully you'll see some of that progress as we go through uh, the next few videos. But once you're mostly happy with, uh, with that as it is, uh, we're ready now to add some final details to the roof. So we want to put some holes and, and a bit of damage on the outside of this building. Um, now I did find painting it to at least some level was uh, an easier way to, to start uh, to do this project. So um, you certainly could do this at the very beginning before your painting. I just found it would be a little bit trickier to blend everything together um, if you're working around these holes. So it doesn't hurt to come back and do this. You will notice that there is, uh, you will see some white paper on these edges as we play around with it. Uh, it was a lot easier to just go back and touch that up. Uh, I think I just used uh, a grey, just a, a craft paint grey um, to kind of fill in those um, that white paper that you can see uh, as we peel this stuff back. Uh, very simple to just go in and put those touch-ups in uh, and cover that up. Uh, now for when you're cutting the holes you want to keep in mind the the size of your corrugated sheet. So for mine I worked on five channels of corrugated paper. Uh, worked out to be one sheet, um, which seemed to be pretty right size for the scale building. Uh, but again, just whatever suits. Um, just make sure you try and keep them the same all over the building. So whenever you're working with a, you know, whenever you're cutting out a sheet of corrugated iron on the building, um, just try to make sure that they're all roughly the same size. Um, same amount of channels involved with each one. Uh, just let's add to that, that realism, I guess. Uh, same as you can see there, I'm just kind of working out roughly how far across it would be for a new sheet to go in. Now I don't think anyone's really going to notice that necessarily, but uh, it might just have uh, you know a little bit more of an impact with other sheets that I might try and peel up or push in uh, around the building. So uh, I guess you know as I add more, it, it might just. Uh, make a little bit more sense if I've taken a bit more time to work this stuff out. So um, now while you do want to try and make this um, you know, neat and tidy, if you do have any mistakes you can generally fix them up. I mean this is a wrecked building so it doesn't matter too much if you have to even rip a panel off. Uh, 
Now at this point I figured I was just about done. I was testing it, thinking this is great. Uh, and then I've realized, you idiot, you forgot the window. So, uh, for this all I did was grab uh, one of my paddle prop sticks that I used for the bracing. I just peeled some sticks off, as you can see there. Um, a big dub of PVA glue goes in. And I'm just going to put those straight over that window so it looks like it's been boarded up. And to finish that, all I'm going to use is just some uh, brown craft paint and a bit of water and I'm just going to put a wash over that and it should look okay. Uh, I probably should have done this um, early on after I did the initial painting and before I did all my other washes, um, but really it doesn't matter. I found this brown paint, a little bit of water, comes off a tree. And here we are, it's finally done. Well, well um, like I said, I'm going to add some more paint to this one to try and uh, get it to look a little bit nicer, but I am working on my painting, so we'll see how we go with that. And I might post an update picture on my Instagram at some stage. Uh, I'll have a link to that down below. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to those people that have uh, subscribed uh, so far to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to everyone that's watched any of my videos. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you find some interesting information in there or some ideas for your own builds in the future. Uh, so anyway, guys, thanks again. Uh, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. And I'll hopefully see you all next week.